Good morning to you and welcome to our Facebook Live today. Sorry, I'm, I need to stop my squeaky chair. <laughs> my name is Jenny McCormack and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. If you're joining me the first time, then do say hi and a big welcome to you. And if you're joining me and you've seen me before, then do say hi, let me know that you're watching. If you're watching on replay, um, or catch up on YouTube or on Facebook and you have any questions or queries about what we've created then don't hesitate to just comment and let me know so it is Wednesday the 29th of September when we're running this video live I can't believe we've only got one more day left of September one more day left of celebration with freebies um, and then we're into October and also that's the new stamping up year 1st of October so it's all systems go this week um, I've had card classes last Saturday yesterday and hopefully Facebook live oh, today sorry. Sorry, I'm really... I don't need two of me so um, yeah so a busy old time so hi Carol hi Monica and hi Kerry so yesterday we created well I created this card and you joined along with me <laughs> so thank you for that um, this is using the birds and branches stamp set and some of the matching dies one of the dies is this lovely circular aperture which is this one here and um, I popped it through a an embossing folder um, and that's worked really well that's tasteful textiles embossing folder and I stamped the nest behind I stamped the two birds and die cut them out so the idea for this is it could be an anniversary card it could also be a wedding card or an engagement card just because of the sentiment on there now I had a request from um, the lovely Trudy to recreate a card that I sent her in the post now I haven't got a copy of that card but I do want to show you the mechanism and this is a really old um, sample that has been pinned to my board for a long time um, hence all the bits in it and this is one that I was practicing on when I created this um, design so it's like it's like a little box card like so so it folds flat and then as you open it up the aperture opens up and you have something behind in this case it says love ya in a speech bubble so I sent a different one to Trudy um, which was a blue one with some flowers and things on the inside and a sentiment and she'd asked me how I made it so I thought I will incorporate doing that card um, with using the aperture here so my plan is to obviously this will be a bigger card than this one here is to have this panel on the inside so it views something behind not quite sure whether it's going to be a sentiment or whether it will be the birds or whatever um, and I also thought I could cut this out rather like we've done here and have that on the front morning Tracy so this is one of those that's very much um, in my head <laughs> um, so experimental is what I call it putting the two together so this um, this design of opening box card has been around for ages um, I prefer it to the um, oh there's another sort of pop out box that you can get but I prefer this because it's I just think it's tidy and it stands up really nicely and it looks like a card when you open it so I'm going to recreate this and on a bigger scale so this one is a nine inch piece of card um, and that will create a three inch um, finished card okay um, so I'm going to use a 12 by 12 um, piece of paper now I don't have much 12 by 12 colored card I do have this 
um, which is Blushing Pride. You can see the difference between that and the petal pink. Really, oh, you can't really see it. Maybe if I go out of the light a little bit. So bright, I've had to put the curtain across. Let me just... Um, move the bag of chocolates away from Cassie as she's found them <laughs> so I'm going to start with a this is actually uh, this was actually six inches by 12 I think I've already cut it to the size of a card actually or have I let's have a look and see I'll get my trimmer so this will be a um, effectively a four inch card so you need to be able to divide your card into three so for no i haven't got it done so 14.85 so i want it to end up almost the size of a normal card it won't be exactly but it will be nearly okay so if you look at this panel here the base card is literally folded into three and then you're going to add the other folds inside. So what I'm going to do, obviously this is 12 inches, so I'm going to score this at four inches and eight inches. Okay, I always recommend you start with that. Just get a grip of how the card goes together. And then this way you can adjust it for any size of card. This will make a nice square card as well. I was thinking about a square card. Um, but let's try this. Just open my extension arm. So I've scored that at four inches. And I'm only using inches because it's nice and easy for 12 by 12. So I'm just being a little bit lazy. So I apologise for that. Okay, so I've got the scores here. <laughs> yes, Cassie. Sorry, the dog wants to play. So what I'm going to do is those are the scores there. So you want to score in half an inch from this right-hand panel and half an inch in from this middle panel. Okay, so half an inch in and half an inch in there. Okay. So, and obviously you could vary this. If you wanted a deeper box, you could have a deeper box. So half an inch in from the right hand side. And then this one is going to be half an inch in from here. So that was scored at eight. So this will be seven and a half. Like so. I appreciate it. It's quite, oh, it's really bright. Maybe I don't need my lights on. Let's see. Hmm. Let's put them back on, otherwise, we'll have shadows. Just means you can't see the colour in quite the same way. Okay, so we've got a full front panel. We've got four inches and half an inch short. Four inches and half an inch short. So if I just fold these over and find a bone folder which has got no it's right in front of me okay so four inches there and there now what i like to do is make sure because this will fold flat so what i like to do is make sure that this will fold exactly flat and and if you can see there's a little bit of a bow there so what I'm going to do is just trim a sliver off the end of this because I want it, when it's shut, to fold very flat. Okay. Now it just depends. Obviously um, our card is made within um, certain limits. So, you know, it can be plus or minus whatever, a millimetre. And that could make all the difference. So I'm just going to line this up on the edge of that and just take a sliver off okay. so 
so now if I fold that over and that one over can you see that goes completely flat whereas before it was slightly bowed good morning Kelly thanks for joining us okay so that's that bit now if I fold these pieces in this is where the little sort of box element comes in and the width of these will determine how deep your box is okay but obviously the deeper this is the narrower the middle section becomes so you don't want this like an inch otherwise you'll only have like <laughs> a very narrow middle piece so just going to fold these over and this mechanism then you can use for lots of different box cards okay so what happens is this is going to get um, glued along here I'm not going to do this yet because I'm going to die cut the aperture but it gets glued along there okay so that when this pops up it's attached to the piece that piece behind and you have that pop-up box element so it folds flat and then because it's attached it lifts up and so what I've done is put on my sample which as I say is years and years old um, glue here and then what we're actually going to do when we stick it down is just going to fold that flat fold it over and then the glue will adhere itself to there and you can see um, what happens here if you put that flat obviously this piece is not in the same place as when the front cover is lifted up so this is one thing you have to um, watch for is not to put your bits and pieces down with it flat which is the temptation because otherwise when this comes up it'll be in the wrong place I hope that makes sense once you've done one it's really easy to recreate and you get um, you know you'll pick up the best way of um, doing that okay so there's our outline card so what I have in mind is my aperture here instead of this one is going to be that really pretty decorative piece from the birds and branches so it's going to be this here so what I'm going to do is just position that open the card up and run that through my die cutting machine now I've put my die cutting machine to the side so that it doesn't wobble the table but I'll show you how I put it through on the plates so this is our stamp and cut and emboss machine So because we're working on the inside, I know that I need to centralise that in this panel here. Okay, and that's one of the reasons why you want to do all the scoring to start with, because it'd be very tempting to put it there in the centre. And then if you create it into a box card, of course, it will be to one side. Okay right so just double checking it's on the right piece okay and you could if you wanted to um, just mark this piece this is probably what I would do if I was beginning if I could find a pencil which are all they're all ready for class yesterday um, so what I would do as if I hadn't done one of these before is I would be marking this piece to know that that was the, that was the section I'm going to cut out does that make sense apologies if you've done these cards before um, and I'm just going to position that I'll do it around here because it's it seems back to front because you're doing it on the left hand side I think that will be fine I could do with my tape but it's in the other room So I'm just going to pop that through my die cutting machine. 
So I say, I hope this is going to work. It's one of those that I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone, which is a bit of a fun, isn't it, when I'm using the bird section. So I hope Trudy catches up with this on um, on YouTube. Okay, how pretty is that? Okay, just wipe that down. So let's see how that's looking. So that will open like that. Hope you can see that. Is that okay? okay? Let me just make sure. It's all showing. Yep, yeah, that looks looking good. Okay. So that's that element. So I've got to decide what I'm putting behind. Okay. And I've got to, um, obviously I'm going to glue this in time, but I'm going to do my scene behind. Um, so what you could do is try just try to work out um, where this scene is, because obviously it's lifted up. What I want to do is just position this roughly in line. It doesn't have to be exact because I'm not actually going to do something. There we go. So what I'm going to do is draw a circle around the edge. Okay. So I know that whatever I put inside, whether it's a sentiment or um, designer paper or whatever, that is the area I need to cover. It doesn't matter if it's bigger than that. Okay, so if you were just putting in designer paper, that wouldn't matter at all. But if you were stamping a sentiment or something, you want to know that it's going to be in that section. Again, because it's offset, it's um, it's a bit of an optical illusion because the temptation would be, again, to have this in the centre. But of course, it's not, not in the centre of that panel. OK, now for the front, before I do any more decorating, um, I want to replicate this. So I want to have that on the front as well. Now, what would be very clever would be to um, to put another inlet panel in there, but I'm going to cheat slightly <laughs> in that I have cut a piece of smoky slate with that design. So that's going to go on the front there. I think I'll put this through the texture embossing folder. Um, and decorate this up and I might use the little flowers from the stamp set and the dies today it's quite light sorry about that oh okay Kerry no worries thank you um, so that's going to be the front panel and then when you open that up you're going to get that view as well that's my plan so I think I'm going to put this through the um, textured embossing folder, like I did yesterday, if I can um, find it. I have my machine. <laughs> and... Bear with me, so sorry. believe it could just go walking out. I can't see the plate or the folder. It is probably right in front of me. Oh there it is. Well there's the there's the folder. There's the plate. 
actually put that actually put that away that's a bit of a miracle isn't it so I'm going to use tasteful textile for this just to give that a little bit more interest on the front just going to pop that through and decide what I'm going to have whether I just have a sentiment or whether I incorporate the birds going to go onto there and what am I going to do am I going to add some I think I'm just going to add some flowers so I've got this middle bit here so I think what I'm going to do is Grab the die for the flowers and I'm sure if I'll stamp and die cut. Or just die cut those. I do want to stamp them, but I'm looking everywhere for the stamps. This is what happens when you have a day or so <laughs> out of the office. Oh dear, I'm sorry. It makes me look so disorganised, doesn't it? Well, that's that's really what it is like, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to cut a couple of these flowers. And I'm just going to see if I can get three out of there. Just so I'm using up that piece of scrap there. Let's just get rid of that mark. Let's put my plates back in. Monica says all. Oh, all good. <laughs> yeah there is that keeping it real so there we go swap the plates over and let's just pop this out So bear with me while I just cut these. There's one. And get three out of that little piece, just about. Obviously once I've done this I can decorate this up further. But it will do for our purposes. Three. So what I haven't used yet, so I'll need to use this tomorrow, is this element here, although I'm not going to add it on here, but how pretty does that look across an aperture? Not, not necessarily this one. Okay, so I've got that and I've actually got some grey. So let's do a couple of grey. like using up the scrap pieces 
and I'm pleased to say after yesterday's horrific rain it's beautiful here today let me bring my microphone over I just realized it's a little far away uh, hi Michelle okay let's have a look see what we've got okay so I've got some little flowers that I've die cut out of the spare and this is what we've got so far so I've got this panel that's going to go onto the front like so and then this is going to open up and you've got the secret panel underneath like so so I think what I'm going to do is decorate this up now the decision is what am I going to put inside am I going to put a sentiment I could do with a nice big bold sentiment in there and then maybe the birds or something inside or just some designer paper would work behind that so I'm just going to make these a little bit more interesting by sort of folding them up and scrunching them up so I'm just using my bone folder onto my mat actually what you could do is just pinch each one like so if I could do it that way bone folder feels a bit big for this little flower and these I'll decorate with some sequins or something on the inside So this was the one that we did yesterday for the one for the ladies that have just joined us. You can see that if I just lift it up a little bit. Those cute little birds. So voila. So what I'm thinking is to have these sort of decorated around and it's funny that I've gone for the same colours but it's only because the 12 by 12 piece although it's a different pink um, I only had sort of pink and crumb cake so it's funny that I've ended up with the same basically so let's think so I'd love your input on the front shall I have these a sentiment in here or um, some birds mm -hmm. or some flowers sort of thinking like so it needs to not if it's a sentiment there it needs to be nice and um, big and bold doesn't it like a big hello or something um, or I could cut out hi for example with my letters something like that Tracy says flowers hi Jennifer and Emma nice to see you ladies haven't seen either of you for ages so I'm thinking something like that and just going to put that there now I do have some coordinating designer series paper that will be in the same pink so let's have a look and see if that would work So I could put that behind there for a bit of interest. So 
I think that's too that's too plain as it is or I could have a bird on the front like I had here so I didn't get as far as thinking what I'm going to put inside <laughs> I only got as far as thinking I want to use that and do a, a shadow box card I'm going to try this behind so I'm just going to cut out a panel that will fit behind there have birds there may be a sentiment on the inside yeah that's a good idea I like that idea Let's just measure this it's about three inches so if I make this three and a quarter so this is my this is my thinking to have that pattern behind like so and then I could have either the birds or the flowers or a bit of both I think maybe it does need the flowers um, the birds And then inside, I could have another piece of this. How crazy. birds and flowers on the front I think yeah, I do need some birds it just needs um, yes soft girls so oh I do have my cutout birds they're the wrong color actually really they look a bit big for that don't they okay let's stamp the birds to grab a piece of paper you know what I'm thinking don't you now I am going to stamp them on white because I want that little edge otherwise it's all going to blend in together but I'll use smoky slate ink grab the elements of the birds don't lose my little flowers this is taking a long time I'm sorry <laughs> Right, okay, let's start with this one here. So pretty. And here's the infill. Glasses are off. I've got an extra wing as well it's not that one but it's the other one there we go. there we are one and then one's going the other way Just do the infill. I 
I do love these birds. And the wing. That's the wrong one. There we go. So I've got my two little birds. So I'm just going to grab the dies to die cut those out. So I've got these two here. So that's going to cut one and that will cut the other. Let's pop those through. Put my glasses back on, see what I'm doing. So what's everybody up to today? I wonder who's crafting. I shall be, um, I'll do a, a coffee um, coffee and card this afternoon. So I'll be, as soon as I finish here, I'll be prepping for that. And then I do get to meet up with some lovely ladies, Wednesday lunchtime. And then I'll be carrying on um, packaging my cast in a box. Not everything has arrived, but I'll get out what I can. Okay. Didn't quite cut that right, but it'll be close enough. Okay, so. I don't know whether I need that panel behind. Let's see. just one bird and then have the other one on the inside how about that I'm just going to trim this down let me see what Monica said Monica's writing a blog post oh excellent she's been asked to be a guest designer for creating kindness blog hop how very exciting oh hi Catherine and bye Catherine <laughs> That's very exciting. When does the, the blog hop go live, Monica? We'll all have a have a look. If you let me know, I'll happily share it on my page. Okay, I'm just trying that because I didn't get it very straight when I put it through. I don't want quite as much white showing. There we go. So I am going to be using birds and branches for coffee and card, but Carol's breathing a sigh of relief because she's not here on Friday. She's not that keen on birds. <laughs> but um, I will have some other designs that use the elements, like the flowers and the... Um, Yes, the foliage, couldn't think of the word. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this piece to the back of there. I quite like that, um, just taking the background out. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue around the edges so I'm just putting it around the edge of the aperture here rather than put it on the piece of paper and then that's it happy with that Okay, that is going to go straight onto there, so let's stick that down. So I'm just using wet glue 
a scribble of glue it really doesn't need any height at all if you prefer to use tape of course you could use tape so that's on the front like so um, now I'm just going to look on the inside and see which I've got more space here on the right so I'm going to have this bird here on the left like so and then some of the my little flowers I seem to have lost two oh, there's one so okay so I'm going to pop that out with dimensionals give it a bit of height Let's trim that little edge off there and actually what I'm going to do is just edge this very slightly with my blending brush so um, this is brown but it will do just to take that edge of the although I want a little edge I don't want it too obviously white so a smoky slate I know this did have brown on it before it's fine so just bringing this in I want a little bit of an edge but not too much there we go so when you cut it out with the dies there is a border around it as you can see here So I'm just softening that, basically. Do the same with these flowers. Just adding a little bit of shading makes them, it just makes them look 3D, or a bit more 3D. I might do the same with these as well. So Monica's writing a blog post. What's everybody else up to? Oh, Monica's got baby magpies. Oh, morning, Lynn. Oh, we're still live. Yes. Oh, 7th of October, 7pm UCC. Monica, would you do me a favour? And when the, um, when the blog hop is ready, would you share your link with me? If you PM it to me, and then I'll happily share it out. Love to see what you've been up to. So hi Lynn, I hope you're all right, not too exhausted from all your work this week. Okay, so let's see what we've got now. So I'm going to have, I said that one inside, didn't I? So I'm going to have this one on the outside and then some flowers. Maybe like that I might keep those for the inside maybe so let's mm -hmm. pop him up with some dimensionals yes I like magpies but they're very very noisy if they're anything like the ones we get here goodness me they make a noise actually going to leave that because I want to do my gluing inside first okay so I want to be able to have this nice and flat which I won't be able to do if I've got dimensionals on my birds okay so for my inside um, I am going to decorate this up here so I'm thinking a sentiment would just go nicely in there and I could again stamp mm -hmm. it on um, some of this paper or I just could have it I think I will stamp it on that I will need to cut another piece though because it's more than I cut it more than three centimeters wide 
uh, three inches wide. So, if you are stamping straight onto here, then you could use that for your area to stamp onto. So I'm going to sort of replicate that by just drawing um, a line around here. What side am I going to have? I'm going to keep it the same. So just going to do a pencil line. I can rub this out after. It just means I can get it my sentiment centralised. And I'm just going to draw around there. So I know that's the area I've got to play with. Okay, let's trim this down. I'll just do that with my scissors. Not quite as big as that though. The height is not as critical, it's the width because obviously it needs to be less than this width with it folded up. It needs to fit in there like so. So I'm going to take a little bit off either side. And I'm doing this now because if I, um, then I know I can get it in the right place. There we go. So that will come over and we'll see our message inside. Okay, so now I want a really nice bold message. And I've got... Thanks, I think will be too big. That hello is quite nice, but I have an idea in mind. Let me see if I can find the stamp set though. Ooh. Da, da, da. That might do the job. That will do nicely. And I'm going to ink that up with I think I'm going to ink it up with basic grey because I want it to really stand out from there rather than a smoky slate. There we go. I had a video phone call from my daughter this morning. She's, she'll be heading on her way home shortly. Finally, it'd be great to have her back home. And um, so she was calling me from the field where her horses are. And she was lying down in the field. She had her a cat, uh, one of her cats, um, sort of on her, on her chest as so she was lying down. And then the foal was lying down with his head on her lap and then mm -hmm. um, Dove the mum of the horse was um, was standing over them it was so sweet Ooh. and it was a lovely blue sky okay so I just want to make sure I want my hello to be nice and bold I've got a mat underneath I'm going to take this maybe slightly high. Let's see. Yep, I think that will work. Oh, wrong one. So I needn't have done my circle in there, but never mind. <laughs> There we go. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is rub out my pencil lines, put some glue on the back and then use the window to position it. 
so it's my first aid kit for people and cards so my first aid kit for people and cards consists of my ink remover a decent rubber an adhesive remover and then for humans um, a series of plasters <laughs> the giraffes and mice there we go and that travels with me everywhere well I say everywhere everywhere where I'm going with my um, um, crafting okay so I'm just going to rub this out so rather a long-winded card it didn't need to be but I wanted to show you the mechanism for making that outline card so if you haven't seen that before you can watch that bit right at the beginning the first quarter of an hour I'll show you how to do that one and then the rest is just decorating and me not being able to decide what I'm going to do okay so I'm going to make sure that that will fit in there which it does okay and I'm going to just put a little bit of glue on and then sort of position it underneath. Oh, thank you, Monica. Oh, Mitsu Craft. Oh, brilliant. And I'm sure yours will be brilliant too. I do like a blog hop, I have to say. So I'm just going to lightly position that there. Okay, and then using that as my guide. Yeah, that's straight enough. Now I could just trim this edge if I want to, or the corners, just to make sure they don't interfere. But I think that will be fine. So the main thing is that that will still fold flat and that when this opens it will fold up like so. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's put this piece on. So the best thing to glue these two together is literally put glue along here as I had on my little um, sample. Keep this flat and fold it over don't try and put this up in the air like so and fold this up because I can guarantee you it won't go well if I did it it wouldn't go straight okay so glue along here which I've just hidden like so so again not too much I always I tend to favor wet glue or Tombow glue it's very good it's permanent once it's dried you can let it dry um, without any layers or without a layer on top of it and it will um, become tacky like a post-it note there we go happy with that so let's now decorate, pop our birds and leaves on. So this one's going to go down there. Let's add a couple of flowers in the top and add some gems to those. Just going to put this up in this top corner just to balance that really. And then we're finally done. and again this is um so monica, monica says she can't wait to try it. this is one of those designs that's been around you know in the paper craft world it things just come around again <laughs> you know this is very rare that somebody will come up with something absolutely new and never been done before 
a lot of paper craft comes from obviously um, Japanese origami but also the quilting world some of the cards we did yesterday at card class were definitely inspired from the quilting world which also goes back you know oops years before that as well like that let's add a bit of bling what have I got to hand might be a bit too deep I'm just going to use these ones as they're there these are just iridescent sequins and obviously you could do more with the flowers you could you know add some of the foliage cut up you know all sorts of things decorate it as you wish so I was just um, really doing this for Trudy so she could see how the shadow box card worked so now if I open that up there we go and so let's add our bird down here and I'm going to pop the bird flat actually because I don't want it too squished on the inside of there so I'm just going to put a little bit on the bottom there like so and Got a couple of flowers, or I could add more. Actually, just going to leave those. I might double those up and add them to the front. So there we go. I'm really sorry, it's very pale for you. Um, <laughs> mainly because of the light not that I'm complaining about the sun, um, but and it is pale pink and smoky slate. So here is our finished card. So that is the front with the bird, the flowers and this um, decoration. And then you open it up and it's got hello on the inside. You can see that with the little bird. And you could write your sentiment on here or you could write your sentiment on the back. And what's nice about it is it really does stand up. So it makes it um, quite an impressive card on somebody's um, mantelpiece so there we go so it's a shadow box card i hope you've enjoyed watching me sorry some of it was a little bit painful at times <laughs> but we got there in the end this was the card we did yesterday with the little birds and that message inside so as i say perfect for an engagement or a wedding wishing you ever happiness this special day will bring with those cute little birds they really do stamp well that's a single stamp that one and then as you add the layers you get this detail so there we go thank you so much for joining me as i say i could have done with some bold colors for today but hopefully the photograph that i put on um, afterwards will show you in a bit more detail so i hope you enjoy the rest of your day um thank you everybody who's joined me and who's still here and um i hope everybody takes care i shall be back tomorrow thursday at 7 p.m goodness me last day of september and i'll be using some of the other elements i haven't yet used so i'll be introducing this and also the frame pieces. I've got an idea for that. Um, if I can find the other pieces of frame. No, of course not. <laughs> but it's this one here, let me show you. So I'm going to be using, utilizing this tomorrow in a different way.
so I hope you can join me for that if you don't join me live obviously I'm still here for catch up um, so thank you so much for today um, do take care look after yourselves look after your loved ones thank you so much for watching and I will catch up with you later thank you so much take care bye for now